Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wines video. Every once in a while in this video series, I want to take you on a little journey to get to know better one of the most famous grape varieties used to make wine all around the world. So step by step, you get to be familiar with every major wine grape name that you find on wine shop's shelves. I think those stories behind grapes themselves are absolutely fascinating, so bringing them to you. Here we've already covered Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir so far, and today I want to tell you a little more about this grape that is called Syrah, or Shiraz as it's known in Australia. We've come across it together a few times as you had a Syrah wine from Italy in your Italian wine selection, you had several from Australia, and some Syrah in red blends as part of your French wine selection. So in a way, you actually already know much more than you probably think about Syrah. You've tasted a few with us with our selection for the Bonner Private Wine Club. And that's because Syrah is a very significant quality wine grape variety all around the world. So let's have a look at where it comes from originally, what it tastes like and what are the wines that you can find and enjoy that are made from the illustrious, the famous, the notorious Syrah. Let's go. My fellow wine-loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there's something that you have to know. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. The reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, might be part of the reason, but because they truly love the wines that they choose, and I do too. You can check them out through the link in the video description, and I'll tell you more about them at the end of this video, but let's get into our works video for now. I mentioned Syrah in last week's video, if you remember, when I talked about the Bordeaux red wine style versus the Rhone style. Syrah indeed very often plays a major role in red blends made from warm climates in the south of France, but also all around the world. Now the grape originates from the southeastern part of France that is called the Rhone River Valley or simply the Rhone or simply the Rhone Valley. I have videos on my own YouTube channel talking about the origin of Syrah. And believe it or not, I regularly get comments from people from the Middle East arguing that Syrah originates from there. And that's mainly because there is a famous city called Shiraz in Iran, a city that has historically been famous for making wine. It sounds like all Iranians know the famous and reputable wine from Shiraz. And Shiraz, of course, being the name that is given to Syrah outside of France, especially in Australia. Now, of course, to a certain extent, all European wine grape varieties originate from the Middle East, around Mesopotamia, that's because that's where humans really started agriculture, viticulture and making wine, and it slowly moved from there towards Europe. But the truth of the matter is that no one has found a link in any historical text between Shiraz the city and Syrah in France. Not even genetically, it hasn't been found, that link this is. The grape was really bred in the Rhone Valley, crossing local grapes in France, that has been proven. That was done a few hundred years ago in France, not thousands of years ago in the Middle East. So we're talking really about a French grape here. What is intriguing indeed is how when Syrah was imported from France to Australia, the Aussies changed the name to Shiraz, the name of that city in Iran. But no one really knows how and why it actually happened. It just did. I think the Australians wanted a slightly different name to distinguish their wine from the very reputable French one, but they wanted something slightly different, slightly more distinctive, which is they succeeded at. Everyone knows Shiraz now, but it's a little bit confusing for some. There was also theories about a link to the city of Syracuse in Sicily, because the name looks quite similar, doesn't it? But it's never been proven, never anyone has written about this, except maybe recently on social media. This to say that there is a whole mystique around the name Syrah, and admittedly it's quite curious spelling. 
there's almost conspiracy theories about it, while in the end it looks like it's simply the old French people and their appetite for making good wine who created this grape, like they did with so many others, the Cabernets, the Pinot Noir and many others in other parts of France, and from there it became a global success story. And I also talked last week about the red wine style that is associated with the Rhone Valley. How Syrah is a key component to the local blended wines that are made from Syrah, but also Grenache, Montvedre and Carignan. So I'll leave this point aside for here, referring you back to that other video. Now Syrah is also very commonly made as a varietal wine. What we call a varietal wine is a wine that is made by, uh, from one single grape variety, one single type of grape. And you can do that with Syrah because it's an extremely good quality qualitative grape. But what does it actually taste like, you're probably wondering, and what does Syrah bring to a wine, to a blend? Well, Syrah is a rather dense and tannic wine, with loads of tannins that are very concentrated and lots of color as well, as you can see. Generous, rich wines you could summarize it into. What's great with Syrah is that its tannins are really excellent, but they are quite granulous as well, and generally they feel like little granules on your palate, a little sandy if you wish, and like Cabernet Sauvignon that can be very finely grained and smooth. Syrah has a little grip to it, and that's also due to Syrah's solid acidity, which it can retain even when grown in warm climates, what Cabernet can't do, Cabernet becomes flabby if it's too hot. Syrah still makes balanced wine in hot areas, which explains its success, all around the world that we'll talk about further in a minute. Even more importantly, Syrah brings very characteristic, typical notes of black pepper. It's really how you can tag and track when you smell a Syrah wine. If it's got this spicy and peppery smell to it, it's often the input of Syrah in many blends. Syrah brings solid body overall, dense yet fine tannins, acidity, and plenty of pungent spiciness. Doesn't that sound like the recipe for an excellent, fine, balanced, and food-friendly wine? All of the components of this, Syrah has. And that's exactly what Syrah is, a fine, balanced and food-friendly wine. This is why Syrah is so popular everywhere around the world. It simply makes good wine almost regardless of how and where it's grown. Given it's warm enough, I'll give you that. Syrah loves heat, it loves sun, it loves a sunny climate just like in the south of France. A little bit like Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah is simply a great grape that makes, generally speaking, good wine. What Syrah has perhaps even more than Cabernet is that it changes expression significantly depending on the terroir, the soil, the climate. You get an interesting style variation depending on the country, the region, but even sometimes the village, like it does in the Rhone Valley. A little bit like Pinot Noir does, and that's absolutely fascinating, and that makes it a highly regarded grape variety for this reason as well. But of course we are, unlike Pinot Noir, in the rich, opulent and spicy genre here. So let's talk about the best areas, best regions in the world, and the different styles where Syrah is grown. In France we distinguish the very spicy, lighter, thinner and more more acidic style of the northern Rhone that is cooler, as opposed to the southern Rhone that is warmer, closer to the Mediterranean. In the northern Rhone, altitude vineyards and a cooler terroir makes illustrious 100% Syrah wines like in the Cote Roti, this bottle right here, but also Hermitage, those are some of the most reputable and age-worthy wines in the world. For an affordable taste of this very style, this very spicy and lighter style, you can try a wine from Saint Joseph or Croze Hermitage. Excellent yet affordable. In the southern Rhone, Syrah helps the blends of the Côte du Rhone wines, the Chateau Neuf du Pape that you know, or Gigondas wine, for example. And Syrah adds this extra concentration and spiciness that we love to find in this type of wine. Then is the very rich and opulent Australian Shiraz style that you've experienced because it's quite hot in Australia, Syrah becomes much richer and opulent. Still plenty of tannins and good acidity, but also this huge immense body, the warmth and the generous texture 
that we love in a good show ours. Sarah has this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde personality to it. From a civilized, refined wine, it can turn into a huge monster of a wine, as it does in Australia sometimes. Yet this style has given birth to some of the most sought after wines from all around the world, like Penfold's Grange, an icon, a collectible wine from Australia. Everyone in Australia loves Penfold Grange. Sometimes, often, Australians buy a bottle of uh, Grange, this very wine, when a child, a baby, is born to keep it and to enjoy when maybe they turn 21 or later because it's so age-worthy. Another cult wine from Australia is the Henschke Hill of Grape Shiraz. Cult, cult wines made from Shiraz coming out of Australia. Then around the world, you will find Syrah wines made virtually everywhere. In Italy, for example, and you had an excellent one from Tuscany in your Italian wine selection. It's used in Spain, you can find delicious Syrah from Chile and Argentina, from South Africa, New Zealand, and also, of course, California. Have you heard of this wine that is called Schaefer Vineyards Relentless? That's the name of the wine. It was named Wine of the Year by the Wine Spectator magazine a few years ago, and that's a very rare distinction, and it is a Syrah wine. I think it's quite telling. In the US, look for Syrah from the Walla Walla Valley in Washington State in particular, like those made by Cayuse Winery. This is really an iconic producer that you should look up. There's also this Charles Smith Royal City, that's the name of the wine, that's a Syrah as well, just to name a couple. Although Syrah wines produced around the world are generally going to be somewhere in between the Southern Rhone style that we talked about and the explosive Aussie Shiraz style. What's really great with Syrah is that if you like the spiciness, this granulous tannic texture and the generosity that is got, everyone that you try is going to have its own personality, slightly different character, a really genuine expression of where it comes from. Truly this is the mark of an outstanding grape, one that gives you the genuine sense of the place it was grown into, delivered straight into your glass. Endless new discoveries as only the world of wine allows and Syrah can play a big part in it if you're curious enough to follow its tracks. On this thoughtful note, I'll leave it here for today. I think I've said enough. I'll have a glass of Syrah perhaps. It's time for this and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Au revoir. Cheers. As I was telling you, this video was made possible by this wine club called the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. With the Bonner Wine Club, we're releasing weekly wine education videos so you can become an expert and get to know everything that I know about wine. I'm sharing everything. So head over to their channel and subscribe to get your weekly fix of awesome wine content from me like this one and even further. We're going deeper with this series. Then if you want even more access to newer wine videos from me and learn even faster plus receiving extraordinary wines that we select from all around the world, well, consider becoming a partner of the Bonner Wine Club. Link in the video description, founded by Will Bonner. The partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import to the US excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. A great opportunity to get access to small batch wines. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest, highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes Mountains. No middlemen here, no additive packed supermarket wines, no inflated costs. Make sure to check out the link in the video description to learn more about this exclusive wine club and get more wine videos. But for now, yeah, I'll see you soon in the wonderful world of wine.